Time for our League of Ireland chat on a Thursday on the Score programme. And our guest this week, uh, we're not going too far, we're only heading to uh, any show. And joining us on the programme once again is former Fun Harps goalkeeper Gavin Cullen. Welcome back to the Score, Gavin. Hi, Arshin. How's things? We're good, Gavin. Not so good around Derry City at the moment, but Declan Devine and the club part of company this morning. Um, no big surprise in that move by Derry? Um, suppose not. Um we talked a few weeks ago about you know, them looking weak and, and, and going to struggle and I think I think we were proved right. Um they look very light. Um I'm not too sure if it's Declan's fault or the sign ins or the budgets or what. Um you always feel sorry when a manager loses her job, you know, for them. But I suppose Derry had to do something because um the longer it goes on without a one it becomes more difficult and obviously they don't want to go down, you know. Yeah. If we look back at last year, of course, it wasn't the season that they wanted. They spent a lot of money in the 2020 season and they decided to change things, go with a more youthful, a more local side, obviously saving on budget. Has that turned out just to be too risky now for the club? Was the decision that was too risky for them? Um, it was risky for Declan, I suppose, at this point. Um, as a club, we don't know how their finances are in terms of protecting the club and and in the background, and uh, we, we've seen it before with clubs in the League of Ireland overspending and and taking years and years to recover or going out of business. So um, it depends in terms of blooding that many young players and, and local players at the same time is difficult. And it's League of Ireland's a tough, tough division. The Premier League is tough. So probably, yeah, in terms of on the pitch, it's going to be a struggle, you know. And... Listen, the writing was on the wall, and away you go six games in, and and, and you don't take a victory for for, for Declan Devine. But mm. there was signs of improvement. We'll give him credit because the, the young players you've got the likes of of Ronan Boyce, who who was really really good this last couple of games for Derry. Uh, young Brendan Barr's another fine example yeah. of youthful yeah. players brought up, up through the ranks that that met his debut in recent weeks as well. So the performances were starting to to, to get better. Declan felt mm. they weren't too far away from that. 1-1, one, one, which probably would have kept him his job. Uh, do you think, were they far from that victory? Uh, probably not. Uh, I thought, I watched their last two games and, and, and watched the LOI. Um, I thought they were quite, they were decent, you know, without being great. Um, they were they were caught with soccer points of a goal, probably in both games. Ended up with draws. But they looked decent, as you say. Some of the young lads coming through from the Ulster League and on the 19s. You no, know, they were caught themselves quite well, but it, it is a big ask for so many of them at the one time. Um, where the, where the first one's coming from? That's difficult. The next three games are Sligo, Bowes, and Van Harps. So, like they're they're all tough games. And I say, the longer it goes on without that first victory, the more difficult it looks for them. You know. Yeah. Just before we look at their next games, uh, is it a welcome move by the club then today? And Declan parting ways. Will the will the Derry supporters be happy with that? I think they will. I think the Derry supporters from day one were on Declan's back. Uh, probably out of order and wrong, but that's football. It's a results business. Um, Declan, Declan's a very good coach, very good manager, um, has done well in football. Um, so, again, but as a decision for Derry and the fans, I think it's right to do it earlier rather than let it go. Um, who they're going to replace him with, I don't know. I think they need to go for a bit of experience and management at this point to, to, to sort of steady, steady the ship and try and get results. But, um, yeah, I think it's the right decision. So, Phil Doherty, the chairman of the club, is a big decision here to make now. Does he stick with what Declan was doing? Um, do they decide to stay with a local-based manager? Obviously, you've got the likes of Paddy McCourt there that could step up possibly to the position. Kevin Derry could be, could form maybe a part of a partnership at, at management level too. Mm. Or are they going to try and check further afield? I don't know. I'd say at this point they probably have a fair idea and have talked to whoever maybe that they're lo looking to. You know, there's likes of Jared Little, um, mentioned Vinnie Perf is uh, available. Um, Paul Hegarty at Harps, you know, with the, his dairy connections, possibly could be the man just to sort of steady the ship for them in there. Um, it's hard to know. Um, in terms of Paddy McCourt and his role within the club, I'm not sure if moving on to senior management at this point is for him. Um, so I don't know. Kevin Deary, I think, was let go in the summer. So again, it'll be difficult. Paddy McLaughlin is doing quite well at Cliftonville. Um, we'll be we'll be surely mentioned for the job as well. 
Um, and the, I think I seen this morning that Jim McGuinness has been touted about for it. So that would be a left field one, but he never know, you know. Yeah, they've got Sligo now. It's top against bottom, so it is. But in circumstances like this, Gavin, and we have seen it in the past, it happens in the majority of the occasions when there's a change of manager. We seen it at Spurs actually last night. When there's a yeah, change yeah. of manager, they dig deep and they get a victory. Like, yeah, big time. Can, they, can they get a win at the showgrounds on Saturday? Um, I'm not too sure physically or if they're up for it, but um, yeah, you always see it if there's new manager in place, the players will be out there impressed. Um, Spur Jose Marino is one of the top managers in the world, gets a sack from Spurs. Uh, the youngest manager ever in the Premiership comes in and gets a one in the first game, so it happens. Um, it definitely happens. Um, whether well, or not against Sligo, I'm not too sure. Sligo are going really well at the minute as well. Yeah, and of course, there's big games to come for Derry as well. Bohemians after that, and then we've got the Northwest Derby, Harps against uh, Derry at the Brandywell, the Maybank Holiday. Mm -hmm. All this is sort of adding to, to to the bill of this Northwest Derby fixture and the, and the magnitude of it, Gavin. Ah, uh, great, and 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 it's it's the it's though the last few years is the first time in a long time that Harps are on a par or no going on as equals to Derry or more. Um, so. It'll be very interesting. It's a real pity that there isn't crowds and fans at this point with Harps going so well and like big games they get when they are going in with confidence to get results. You know, it, it's really, it brings it home that there is no supporters getting to see it, you know. Yeah, what about the Harps then at the moment? They've, they've had a defeat, a draw and a victory since, since we last spoke, uh, Gavin. Their last two games has been that loss um, and and then the, the, the draw on yeah. Tuesday night uh, away to Longford. Uh, but they're still sitting three points off the top. They're still in the top half of, of the table. Maybe they were unlucky not to get anything out of Flancare Park uh, the last night, or Bishopsgate rather, against uh, yeah. Longford. But uh, things still motoring well for the Ball Buffet say, yeah. the last couple of weeks. Going very well. Maybe lost a wee bit of momentum in the last two games. But look, I think I think they're, they've got experience in the squad, the management team have experience of losing and winning and, 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 and get bouncing back. I have no doubt um, they'll bounce back this week. They have, a, they have a huge game Friday night against Pats. Like they go up level with them or maybe even above them if they beat them. So it's been a brilliant start. Um, by all accounts in Longford, they, they played okay. They done very well. Um, they should have won the game. They had the best chances. So they come away disappointed. And in an away fixture in the League of Ireland is always positive when you come away with the draw and being disappointed. Yep. The, the, the Sligo game again was tight. I don't think they were great. I think Sligo just aged it, but conceded a poor goal again. If you don't give that away, you come away there with a point, which we've been, they've been delighted with, you know. Yeah. Um, Sligo, of course, they lost in, 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 in that derby. Uh, St. Patrick's Athletic, and other side, in the leading trio at the moment. Will this be a real good measure then? What, seven games in as we come towards the end of the series where, where Harps are actually at? I think so. I, I think I think they're getting the respect that they deserve at the minute. I think I think all them clubs are standing up and knowing that they're going to be up there. I, I do I do think they'll finish in the top five or six this season. I think they have the squad depth to do that. They've shown with players missing and who's coming in and doing very well. The players really play at the top of their game. Um, they look physically strong and disciplined. They don't concede a lot. So like they're not going to lose many games. They're not going to lose that easy. You know, so like I'm sure some Pats will be coming, coming to Balfe. I know nearly happy with a point if they get it. You know. Yeah, uh, Harps haven't scored in the last two games. The the goals were flying in from the likes of, mm. of Adam Foley in the, in the opening three matches. Uh, so they were, uh, Gavin, a goal on Friday night would be nice just to keep uh, that confidence going. Oh yeah, that can say that. And I suppose Adam Foley's got most of their goals this season. So again. You know, if, if his goals dry up, you're looking for somebody else, maybe midfielders, to come up with a goal. You no, know, some of the other strikers. You know, so if they go another game or two and don't and don't score, then you start to wonder then, well, where's the goal's going to come from? But I think they, I think they have a threat from set pieces, and the defenders are threats as well. So there, there are threats from all over the pitch. You know. Okay, let's look at the other game. Shamrock Rovers against Bose. Uh, it's the other match on Friday night. Uh, that was that's going to be the ones on TV, and this one could be a, a real interesting game. Rovers with late goals the last two matches, yeah. keeping their their push on at the, at, at the top of the table. They seem to have the look of the champions at, at the minute. So they have Gavin. I will look. You make your own luck. Um, scoring late goals and and and, and grinding out results when you're not playing as fluent as as maybe they were last season, um, as a sign of a, a good side, a great side. And I think they are still, uh, they, they, they've come under the radar slightly and they're still top of the league. So 
um, they will still be the team to beat that come the end of the season. Yeah. Are Dundalk going to come good? They've got Drogheda. There's a big derby match down there on on, on Saturday. They drew with Derry uh, on, on uh, Tuesday night, so they did. Uh, they felt they should have won the game, but yeah. um, with the change of management there as well and a change of structure on on the line, as as can you see Dundalk now turning things around in the coming weeks? You would expect them to, um, but a turmoil the minute, I suppose, with management, who was the manager and what was going on behind the scenes there, which is, is never good in the football club. No, somebody needs to be in charge. Um, the players they have, obviously, they should be well up the league, the budgets, what they're spending, the professionalism. Um, but at the same time, results, and they haven't won a game yet. They're still d- like down along with their area near the bottom of the league. So... They will, they will move up the table. They won't move up the challenge for the league this year, I don't think. Yeah, one other game at the weekend. It's on Saturday as well, 6 o'clock. Waterford against uh, Longford Town. This is the, the type of game that you could see a share of the spoils on, so it is, given the way the two teams are performing. I would say so. And, and probably at this stage of the season, it's probably early to call it a six-pointer, but a, a one freeler team would be would be huge here because I think them two clubs plus you know one or, one or another will be in the bottom half of the table are fighting relegation so so it's a huge game for both clubs at this point yeah okay then gavin just finally uh on the ulster senior league any movement yet as to when you guys are going to get a return none but look the government suppose are talking more positive so we hope to get back training in may sometime um well they wait to start the new season in, in august like other leagues i don't know i think it's too long for footballers to be out of football, I think they need to organise some sort of local tournaments or something within the leagues, just to get guys guys back in the pitch, maybe for June and July, um, and and get out in the fresh air and stuff, you know. So, again, looking forward to getting back, but um, it has to be safe to do so, you know. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait and see what happens. Hopefully, we'll be back real soon. Gavin, as always, thanks for joining us on our League of Ireland chat. Cheers. Thanks, Ocean. Thank you.